Good evening. My name is Kyle Gerich. I am a member of the boys basketball team and baseball team, including the 2018 state championship baseball team. At this time, it is my honor to welcome David Adams to the podium as he introduces Phil Adams. Thanks, everybody. I normally don't bring attention to myself or my family, but <clears throat> tonight I'm going to because my brother's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. I couldn't be more proud of him. Uh, I'd like to thank Dan O'Connell and the committee and the officers and everybody associated with the Hall of Fame. It's a great thing. Um, I told Phil yesterday when we were talking about this, it's really a great thing because there may not be a lot of people that seek out his headstone after he passes, <laughs> find it and realize, okay, there plays Phil Adams. But there's going to be people that have walked by the Hall of Fame and see his name there forever. So that's a great thing. Really, really impressive. So thanks again. I just wanted to give a history and a timeline of, of that period of time when Phil uh, was uh, getting out of Holbrook and coming into Aurora High School. And uh, we grew up in Eddington. We didn't grow up in Brewer. And when Phil was nearing graduation from Holbrook, there was a lot of talk in our family of how many kids from Eddington, Holden, Clifton had actually come into Brewer and had success in sports. There was one that we knew of, his name was Steve Gray, but, but that was it. So during that time, we thought that Phil was really going to be a groundbreaker as far as being able to come to Brewer and succeed. We grew up across the road from my dad's mom and dad. Uh, his father was a World War I veteran. His brother Earl, our great uncle, was also a World War I combat veteran. Our father, our father was drafted in 1944, um, served in the Army Air Corps, and our mom, who really is the person that is most responsible for Phil's success and my success as well, um, I'd like to recognize her. I, I'd like you to stand up. Hilma Adams. <laughs> Hilma was the sixth of 14 children. Uh, she grew up in Hall Quarry. When Hilma was 14, her parents told her that she was going to have to move out of the house and live with families and earn her own way by helping those families with housework, babysitting, whatever was required. The interesting thing about it is, she was not bitter about it. She never told me that she was upset at her parents. And she went out, she made the best of it, and not only kept an, a very good relationship with her parents, but would give them a portion of the money that she earned to help with the rest of the kids. <clears throat> One story that sticks out in my mind is um, I was probably six years old. She had just bought a new Volkswagen Beetle. We're in Bangor, we're going around the rotary. This is before the malls opened up. We find a parking space. Mom pulls up, puts the blinker on, starts to back in. This guy comes right in behind her. She's 
stops, looks back. We're waiting there. Cars are going by, blowing their horns. Hey, what are you doing in the way? I said, Mom, what are you doing? She said, David, if I have to sit here all day, I will, because this is our parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, a real sense of pride coming from <clears throat> our parents, um, brought themselves up by their own bootstraps. Um, when Phil was at Holbrook, he was lucky enough to be coached by a, a, a very good coach by the name of Bill McManus. Bill was just a great coach, taught the fundamentals, a disciplinarian, taught Phil everything that he needed when he actually showed up at Brewer High School. Another story that I have that occurred about that time is um, we had snowmobiles, we had some property. My dad told Phil, I don't think you should take that sled out. You know, there's, I got, there's problems with it. Maybe you shouldn't go very far with it. Well, he does what most 13-year-old boys do and he heads right down in the backfield. He's not around when my mom gets home from work and it's starting to get dark. Where's Philip? Well, Dad told him not to take the snowmobile down back, but he did. He said, let's go see if we can find him. I jump on the snowmobile and I'm thinking, I wouldn't even dare walk down here myself in the dark, much less, you know, come back down after the snowmobile. We get down there. We're on a snowmobile, we get down here where the headlights where we can see him. He's got a rope over his back, and he's pulling the snowmobile back home. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I guess strength is not a problem, so, nor is determination. And Phil really had a good opportunity to work on his competitive edge with me, five and a half years younger, he didn't take it easy on me. He would, hey, let's, let's race. No, I don't want to race, you beat me. I'll give you a lead. Okay, how much of a lead do you need? Well, <clears throat> this much, all right. So we'd race to the steps. And I'd hear his footsteps, like three steps away from where, you know, I would actually win the race. Well, got you again. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> so, that's just how it is. I mean, I had two boys, and, and I understand that now a little better than I did at the time. So, the next step is uh, coming into Brewer. Uh, Phil does. He has success as a freshman. Um, he's got the size. He's got the fundamentals down. He's got the strength. Next year, sophomore year, we're thinking, geez, you know, I wonder if Phil is going to be able to make varsity. Not only did he make varsity, but he was a starter on varsity as a sophomore, which in our house was big news. That was a big deal. Not only did he start as a sophomore, but they made the tournament that year. And uh, I believe it required a win right at the end of the season to get in, and, and it happened. So another big deal. Everybody was excited. Phil and, and uh, Scott Steinus, two of Come the, the Twin Towers would have two more seasons to compete at Brewer, and having already made the tournament, I mean, things look good. They ended up facing a Bangor team, which was a very, very good team. And, uh, and I say facing them, they, they played them twice during the regular season, were beaten badly. <coughs> they got in as the eighth seed, Bangor was the number one seed, and, and they had to face them in the first round. And that was that. Sophomore season's over. 
junior year rolls around and okay, we got something now. We, we got some players. Things are looking good. And I mentioned Scott Steinus earlier. Uh, one of my memories of, of Scott Steinus is, and I should probably say that um, my mom and I, we went to every game together. I mean, we didn't miss any games, so I saw all of them. Scott Steinus would make himself big, and when he would go up to get the first rebound of, for him in the game, which was usually the first rebound that was available, he would make himself big. And he would take one hand with the ball and bring the other hand and slap that ball so loud that it sounded like a clap of thunder. So he was setting the tone right there. They made a, a tremendous duo, uh, Phil and Scott. Um, like I say, I saw every game. I, I never saw them outplay <coughs> in the post. <coughs> Not only that, but um, that year, Phil's junior year, uh, Coach O'Connell had a JV team that I don't believe lost a game. Chris Blodgett in the middle, Vaughn Winchester, Jimmy Bartol, tremendous team. So, wherever we went, we were pretty safe that JV team was going to come out and, and win easily, as was the varsity team. I think they won 13 games that year, so it wasn't, they didn't just walk right through the season winning every game, but they were in every game. Came up against an old town team, very quick, very determined old town team, and lost three games to them that year, uh, third being in the tournament. But still, at that point, this, this is the memory that I have of that period, is, okay, that happened, we lost Old Town, we got another year, you know. And the other thing I wanted to mention is, um, and I'm sure they probably still do it, but the nameplates in the gym, listed by name and number. The pride that I had when I looked up and saw the name Adams up there, I, I just have to, I just wanted to mention it because um, it, it was a big source of pride for me. Senior year rolls around. <clears throat> Phil is, is he's named co-captain. He's becoming the best player on the team. Phil was ready to provide whatever the team needed, especially late in the game. Need a big rebound, Phil will get it. Need a basket, Phil will get it. His basketball IQ was great. Phil, you know, could see the end game even before I think they went out to, for warm-ups. He, he, he knew what he wanted to have happen and how he was going to make it happen. I've got Silent Assassin here as a description of him. You might laugh at that because he's 6'8", and he, I think in his prime he's probably 230, 235. Not the quickest guy on the team, but my memory of watching him play was it, it wasn't a flashy, wow, look at me, you know, it wasn't a big, strong uh, movements. It was a very smooth operator on both ends of the court, offensively and defensively. Phil was named Athlete of the Year in 1977. He was also named All-State. Um, I don't, I'm not going to speak a lot of his baseball career, but he had a lot of success in baseball. He actually ended up going to Eckerd College down in St. Petersburg and playing baseball down there for four years. Um, so, a good athlete, obviously. Um, so I want to thank Phil uh, for helping me because um, this, this occurred obviously after Phil got out of high school. And while he was in college, I was on my way up through and, and, um, 
the motivation that I had to finally beat him in one on one really, really helped me, really powered me through uh, the work that it took to get there. Uh, and, and it was a long time coming, but I did finally get there. And I just want to end with one story. Um, it's, it's not a, we didn't get to play on the same team very much. Every time we'd go play pickup ball, Phil would be on one team, I'd be on the other. And probably about half the time, there would be a shoving match and potentially a, a real fight because that's just how we play and, and we're brothers. So we're up at UMO, this is, uh, I think it's after my first year at Husson where I traded elbows with Keith Ogden for golf season. Phil was just getting out of school in Florida. We're up at the pit and if you ever went up there to play pickup, um, the field house, you know, all the courts are busy in the field house, but if the pit was open, that was where, you know, that's where you really could find the best competition. So we get up there, and I don't know if these names ring a bell, but Jeff Cross and Rich Henry, who were starters for Maine, they're on, they're on center court in the pit. And they've got their property at the University of Maine, and they've got their Maine sneakers on. Woo! Look at us, you know? We're just, doesn't matter, we're staying on the court. So Phil and I said, well, I guess we'll take winners. Okay. I don't have to tell you what happened, right? We pushed them around. I think we won 11-5. They weren't interested in doing battle and getting physical, and that's how Phil and I play. So um, it's a it's a memory I have, and it's a good memory. And one more story before I go, before I introduce Phil. My oldest son, he's a pretty good athlete himself. And he's taken up golfing, and uh, so he's. We talk a lot. He, he came to visit uh, two summers ago. And he's telling me, leading up to it, Dad, I'm, I'm swinging the club really good. I'm hitting the ball really straight. My, my scores are great. So I'm going to beat Uncle Phil. I said, I'd be careful there, Brian. I'm not sure you're going to beat Uncle Phil. Oh, yeah, I got him. I got him covered. And I'm thinking, I had a lifetime of trying to beat Phil, and now I had a lot of success at it, so maybe, you see what happens. Phil was gracious enough to take him golfing, took him down to Bar Harbor. They show up. I don't hear a word out of Brian, so I know what happened. <laughs> so I asked him a little while later, I said, so what happened, Brian? How'd that go? Well, lost by a couple strokes. So, I'm going to end it there. I, I'm very, very proud of my brother, and I'm very thankful for everything that my mom did for him and for me. And uh, this, this honor of Phil being in the Hall of Fame is, is just, it's just awesome. So, thank you very much.
Thank you, David, for the introduction. This is a special day for me, and I feel privileged and humbled to be here. I want to start by thanking the Brewer High School Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm now a member of the most distinguished list of indi individuals and teams that include state champions, professional athletes, others who have had playing fields and buildings named after them, and streets. <laughs> my brother David. Uh, he once scored 42 points in a high school game against Caribou in the pit and totaled 1,248 points in a four-year career at Hudson University. No slouch. my sophomore and junior years at Brewer High School, and my fellow Hall of Fame inductee Dan O'Connell. Two Hall of Fames, and two Hall of Fames for <laughs> uh, My parents, Phil and Homer Adams, who gave me tremendous support throughout my life. And um, so who would have thought a kid from Eddington that didn't touch a basketball until sixth grade total 43 seconds on the Holbrook Junior High School game <laughs> my 7th grade year would be here except for this award. So my career, uh, my freshman year I was able to make the freshman team and I was mixed in with a very, very talented group of basketball players to form a rather tall and successful freshman team coached by Phil Huckins and I loved playing for him. He was a big guy's coach, no doubt about it. He loved it. He got more excited um, when Scott and I scored a basket than I think we did. Um, sorry, a little emotional to that. In my uh, sophomore year, Ron Cody arrived and he immediately made Scott Steinmus and myself the focus of the team's offense and defense. Built as the Twin Towers, we gave some lumps and we took some lumps, and all the while trying to get better and be the best we could be. Ron Cody left after my junior year, and my fellow inductee tonight, Dan O'Connell, coached me in my senior year of 1977 with some memorable games. One game we were down by 20 points at halftime to ha Hamden Academy at Hamden Academy. And we came back to win 68-67 with Scott Steiner scoring a basket with a few seconds left in the game to complete the comeback win. Hamden Academy ended up winning the East Dominion Class B Championship that year. We split during the regular season with Stearns and Millinocket who won the East Dominion Class A Championship in 1977. And during that tournament we defeated Coney of Augusta in a close game at the Bangor Auditorium with Mike Norris making two clutch free throws at the end of the game for a 70-66 win. In my senior year of high school, we had a group of very good athletes. Mike Norris was the best golfer in the state. He once made 50 of 50 foul shots during a junior high school foul shooting contest. Rod McEwen, best quarterback in the league, played four years of football. Scott Steinmus, my running mate, he was the best all-around athlete that I had ever, that I had seen at Bill High School. He was great at football, where he played offense and defense and punted. In basketball, he was he always guarded the other team's best player still delivered, you know, offensively. Baseball, he played center field, batty cleaner. Great athlete. Brian Hadley Burr. 
was a tough defender and rebounder in basketball and co-captain of the Brewer football team. Chris Blodgett, Thomas College Hall of Fame basketball. He played behind Scott and I six times. Great athlete, great basketball player. Vance Gray, Jim Bartol, Paul Jobs, Jeff McNally, Mike Huskins, Glenn Hicks, all great athletes. Some went on to play college athletics. Being surrounded by such great athletes always made me try to be as good as I could be. And practicing with such a talented group made my all-around game get better. I know this is an individual reward, award, but I feel that without the support and efforts of my teammates, I never would have achieved the success that was bestowed upon me. Thank you for this induction into the Royal Hall of Fame.